her. Say hi. <laughs> oh, I love you. Hi everyone, my name is Tia and in January and February I read 13 books which is honestly so different from where I was last year because February alone in 2023 I read 18 books. <laughs> we are just gonna speed run these bad boys. We are just gonna rapid fire talk about them. Going in chronological order, starting off in January, the first book I read this year was My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Bachman, my favorite author ever. It was actually part of a vlog. It was a little bit more magical realism-y than I had expected. I feel like I always have issues with that where I go into books expecting something else and that's why I rate it lower or I feel like it's not as good as I want it to be. I think I need to work on that this year. I just don't really think think magical realism is my cup of tea so I gave it three stars but it was still really cute. Off the Books was an arc that was honestly so much more interesting than I expected it to be. In my Goodreads review I said that this should be categorized as general fiction with a subtle hint of romance that focuses on familial and platonic relationships during an emotionally charged road trip. <laughs> and then in parentheses, my favorite very specific genre. That's such a niche thing that I have found that I absolutely love in books. We follow our main character, May. She's in her 20s and she does like an under the table limo service for different kinds of clients. It was more of a developed coming of age story because she's in her 20s, but we also deep dive into why she is the way she is and like her complicated family history. Oh, Hero has a mouse. Figgy only plays with a specific mouse toy and we call Call this the hero mouse because it for some reason missing a tail hero is currently just chewing on it so now it's all wet if you saw my worst books of 2023 video i showed that figgy had a favorite transgender colored mouse it was like target's pride month collection and sadly r.i.p that one is gone hero ate it this is what we're working with now <laughs> poor figgy <laughs> I'll put this right here for safekeeping. Oh, hello. You also learn about the brutality against the Uyghur population in China. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. I tried to Google it. This is how you pronounce it. Uyghurs. That's something that I have never heard about or learned about before. The book does it in such a way where it's very educational without taking away from the characters, the narrative at all. And I thought it was really well done and really important. I definitely give it a four stars and I would highly recommend this book. I received a physical arc of Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. I unfortunately gave this a three stars because I feel like this book was pure character dynamic, like not even character development. <laughs> Just characters doing their thing, talking to other people, being around each other. Like I didn't feel like there was a lot of growth in any of the characters. Oh, and I think this is the biggest disappointment. Powerless by Lauren Roberts, which I have been hyping up in my head because everyone has been hyping up on the internet. But again, I need to curb my expectations when it comes to reading popular releases because I just felt like this was so much more okay than what everyone else was saying about it, which sucks. I feel like the writing was kind of repetitive you know people are saying that it's very much hunger games vibes but it was like almost too on the nose for hunger games however i will say that i'm definitely going to be reading the sequel because the last 10 percent of powerless just goes bonkers she set up for the sequel really well so i will definitely be reading the second one the last two books in january i read collide which was an arc and i thought it was like a fine hockey romance i think the reasons why they couldn't get together got kind of annoying kind of repetitive by the end but like whatever <laughs> Oh, I noted that I really do wish that her Indian heritage was like included more in her personality. I feel like the author made her a diverse character and then didn't really do too much with the depth of that, which was kind of disappointing. And then I read Dark Matter by Blake Crouch and this was a buddy read with Karen and we both really enjoyed this book. It definitely plays with the idea of like infinite universes and different realities. Oh, it was like watching a TV show, truly. I had a crazy good time reading it because it was just so mind bending. It was really easy to binge. I gave it a four star. I don't like it as much as I liked Recursion, but I feel like if I had read Dark Matter before I read Recursion, maybe I'd feel differently. And in February, I started off reading The Silent Patient. I heard it's kind of popular, so I kind of went into it really hoping for the best. And I think because I read so many mysteries last year, what, how many did I read? Like 50 or 60? Unfortunately, I just feel like this is a book very much for mystery beginners, which is great. But because I have so much exposure to the genre already, I think I already saw the twist coming from like a mile away. I feel like he was hinting towards the twist for basically the entire book. I gave it a three stars because truly if I read this when I was just getting into mysteries, I would have eaten this up, guaranteed.
Another arc I read was Go Lightly, and unfortunately I gave it two stars. Oh, hi, Figgy. Okay, you're gonna stand on my laptop? Oh, cool. They've been hanging out more often on the couch, like successfully without anyone trying to bite each other. It's been really good. <gasps> you're watching history in the making right now. Anyway, Go Lightly, it was just so boring. <laughs> Some quotes really stuck out to me and I do remember enjoying the writing. It was so character driven and I didn't care about the characters enough to like the book. So I gave it two stars. Interesting fact about Space by Emily Austin. Oh my gosh, her writing is so funny. Like I distinctly remember, okay, you know when you laugh at a book and you go, <laughs> like you go through your nose, like it's like a chuckle, but it's through your nose. like. Like that. I remember doing that so many times. I was like, wow, this book is really funny. Our character is a neurodivergent lesbian. So I love the representation. I loved her personality. I feel like it was character driven in a good way. The only gripe I have with this is that I felt like the ending was pretty lame, but I think I gave this three stars. I don't think I gave this four stars. Women of Good Fortune, which was on my 50 anticipated reads for 2024. I will link it right now. I'm trying to read everything that I said that I wanted to read. Here's to hoping that actually happens, <laughs> but I'm slowly but surely scraping away at that. This is a book about a Chinese heist centered around three women, and they all kind of have like these turbulent familial and romantic woes that they have to deal with. They're all best friends. And I loved how all three women had very separate romantic side plots. By 50% of the way through, I was invested in every single one. The central theme of the book is most definitely like trying to stick up for yourself and like going after what you want rather than going after what your family wants for you. I wish the heist was more like adrenaline pumping. I was really excited for it because I love when heists are in books, but this one just was like kind of okay. But I did give it four stars because I truly did really enjoy the narrative. I like the book. You should definitely read it. <laughs> Funny Story by Emily Henry was also included in the 50 Anticipated Reads for this year video. Unfortunately, it fell flat for me. I was truly trying to vlog it because I got the arc from NetGalley, but I... <laughs> By the time I like got into the plot, I got so upset with the main character that I just like sped read it until three in the morning. So <laughs> I don't have a vlog for that. I have like a full spoiler review about it on Goodreads. What am I trying to say? I just feel like the message was quite blurry in terms of what Emily Henry was trying to tell her audience. Basically our main character, Daphne, she gets dumped by her ex fiance now because he decides to date his childhood girl best friend. And so she moves in with the best friend's boyfriend who they're not broken up with, obviously. Uh, why did she just jump into another relationship? I don't know. I don't want to, <laughs> I'm going to get mad just thinking about it. It just didn't work for me. And I'm happy that people are liking it. It has a really good rating on Goodreads. So I think again with Emily Henry's, besides Happy Place, I feel like I just fall into the unpopular opinion category. And then because I was so unsatisfied with Funny Story, I decided to reread Happy Place, <laughs> which is one of my favorite books ever. It is the only five-star read that I have right now. I just needed to scratch that itch. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of the books that I read were three stars, decent four four stars, but nothing was getting me to like, wow, this is a five star. So I just had to do it. I had to read Happy Place, but I had a really good time. I cried three times. <laughs> I'm going to be rereading Beach Read by the same author to try and give her another chance because Happy Place is the only one I've liked. And I feel like I might like Beach Read. And then the only book I haven't finished, but I know I will before February is over is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I'm actually reading it for a reading vlog that I'm super excited for. So stay tuned for that. So I'm not going to give away my rating or anything. It's very, fairy tale esque I guess I just didn't expect it I went in blind I didn't know anything about it so why do I have those expectations I have no idea the writing is really good and I'm actually enjoying the story it's only six hours long so it's actually really short so stay tuned for that reading vlog <laughs> to hear about my opinions and those are the 13 books I read these last two months this year I'm definitely trying to focus on quality versus quantity I did okay with the quantity part not so much the quality we're still working on it but I hope you guys had a wonderful start to your year. Please let me know your favorite reads from the last two months. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you in the next one. Say bye. <laughs> Hero, do you have anything to say?